the topic of bloodlines has been a very vast and fascinating subject that we have covered on this channel. And did you know that there is a phenomenon associated with some bloodlines, but has nothing to do with the blood itself? But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, as always, a very, very, very special thank you to all of our patrons. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we are going to be talking about the call bearer. This topic is coming to you from a viewer suggestion and I am so excited to present this video to you because I had never heard of this phenomenon and oh my gosh what an interesting anomaly that happened in about 1 in 80,000 births. As I said in the opening, this phenomenon of being born a call bearer does run in people's families or their bloodlines. And being born a call bearer means that you are born with a lot of superstition and perhaps some mysticism around you. So what is a call bearer? When a woman is pregnant, the baby develops in what's called an amniotic sac. This is a fluid-filled sac that envelops the baby during pregnancy. Its purpose is to protect the baby while the baby is developing in the mother's body. Now, normally, right before a baby is born, the sac will break. This is called the breaking of the water or when a woman's water breaks. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that if you have had a child yourself or have seen any type of comical movie about a woman in labor. You have seen that embarrassing episode where a woman will be at the supermarket or at a restaurant or at a shopping center and all of a sudden, water will just gush out of her body almost like peeing her pants, but way more intense. Well, this again is the amniotic sac breaking because now the baby does not need the amniotic fluid anymore and the baby is ready to be born. Now, in some cases, a woman will go into labor and her water won't break. And in a lot of these cases, the doctors will actually physically break the water for the woman while she's at the hospital. My sister had to have this done with my nephew. And from what I understand, this is a pretty painful experience to have a doctor break the water for you. Now on the surface, a call bearer is a baby that's born while still in the ambiotic sac. It creates what is described to be a jelly-like bubble that the baby will come out in. This is called being born in call. However, within a lot of call bearer communities, being born just in the ambiotic sac in this jelly-like bubble doesn't necessarily mean you're a call bearer. Being born a call bearer means being born with a veil over your face or what's called a lucky cap. This means that part of the membrane is still over the baby's head when they are born. They're not necessarily born in this bubble, but with part of the bubble still over their head. Now, when this happens, when a baby is born with the lucky cap or with the membrane just over their head, the first thing that needs to happen is for the baby to be able to breathe. And apparently there is a way they go about removing the call from the baby's head or removing this veil from its face. Apparently the call still kind of attaches to the child from behind the earlobes. And so the first thing they have to do is cut holes in both the nostrils of the call and on the mouth of the call before they start to actually remove it from the child. Now I might be wrong about this, but this tells me that instead of just taking the call off, they have to actually first cut the holes, that this might take a little bit more precision and time to actually get that membrane off the skin of the child without hurting the child. Now since the beginning of time, many different cultures had certain fears or mystic beliefs and superstitions 
around call bear children. Sadly, in the Middle Ages, many call bear children were by the Catholic Church. Thank God we don't live in the Middle Ages anymore. And in some cases, where the child was allowed to live after being born a call bearer, they would perform an exorcism on the child to make sure that it did not have any demonic possession. In Eastern Europe, it was at one point a belief that a child that was born a call bearer was destined to become a vampire or a werewolf post the child's death. In order to prevent this from happening, the people of Eastern Europe believed that you would have to save the call that was on the child's face, dry it out, grind it up, and have the child eat the call on his or her seventh birthday. In a lot of cases, parents of call bearers would dry out the call as well and post it on their door so that they wouldn't have monsters visiting their houses. They believed that the child born a call bearer was potentially cursed. And so if they showed the outside world that they already had one cursed soul in their house, no monster or supernatural being would dare try to enter their home. Now in places like medieval England, it was believed that the call bearer was lucky that this was a good omen for the town and for the child and for the child's family. They believed that the call bearer child was destined to be blessed and to live a glorious and powerful life. That these children were born mystics and psychics. And in a lot of these cultures, these children were also considered to be kings by right, that the call bearer had natural leadership abilities. And because of its mystical and psychic powers and its leadership abilities, the call bearer was a perfect candidate to rule a nation. And this wasn't just in Europe as well. This was also believed by the Tibetan Buddhist. Now we have done a story on the Dalai Lama that I will link down in the description box below because we know the Dalai Lama himself is not necessarily the greatest guy in the whole world. But apparently when the Lamas are out looking for the next Dalai Lama or the new Dalai Lama, one of the requirements is that they be born a call bearer. Now, do I believe that call bearers are born with mystical special powers like the superstitions say they are? Yeah, I kind of do. Just like the RH negative blood group carries specific mystical and psychic powers, I believe that these special abilities are encoded in our DNA and our gifts given to us by God. But when we're dealing with human beings, we're dealing with a lot of gray area. There is no such thing as black and white thinking. We're also dealing with the power of free will. If you are born a call bearer and you are born with certain mystic or psychic powers and great leadership abilities, just like anybody else in this world, you are given the choice between service to others and service to self. You are given the choice to polarize positive or negative. It is up to you on how you use your abilities. I'm sure there have been many call bearers in the past who have used their gifts for the greater good. And I'm sure, just like the Dalai Lama, there are many call bearers who have used their gifts for evil. Because after all, on this planet, since the beginning of time, we have been in an epic battle between good and evil. And every human being's soul is at stake. Only it's at stake by the human being's own choices and decisions. Now, there have been quite a few famous people in our human history who allegedly were born call bearers. One of these people was supposedly Moses, as in the biblical character Moses, the writer of the Torah. Another person who allegedly was born a call bearer was Maria Laveau. It is also believed that Napoleon was a call bearer, as well as Liberace. And people like Alexander the Great and Sigmund Freud are also on the list of supposed call bearers. 
Now, I want to hear from you. Since this was a viewer request, were any of you born with the call? Have you experienced psychic or mystical abilities in your life? Please let me know down in the comment section below. Down in the description box, I am going to leave a website as well as a YouTube channel that's run by a call bearer. In case any of you are call bearers and all of a sudden you're starting to realize that maybe these psychic abilities or these supernatural phenomenon that's happened around you is related to your birth, it might help to be in touch with somebody else who has also experienced this. After all, they do say that call bearers tend to find each other. It's not that they're really looking for each other, but there is something that connects them. And it's also common for call bearers to end up marrying other call bearers. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a fantastic Friday and I hope that you're having a fantastic weekend ahead. I will be out of town next week. However, I do have videos already lined up to drop to you guys. I will still be doing my live show with David Zublik on Tuesday on the Dark Outpost. I will just be doing it from a different location. I hope you all have a blessed weekend. Thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the opening song, once again, there is a link down in the description box below. And thank you so much to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys today. I will speak to you soon. Bye.